Hey there, Mike Robinson with Blackhawk Paramotor USA. Today for another tips and tricks. Or educational. More educational? Yeah. I guess it is. It's yeah. an educational video. As many of you know, heat or temperatures everything on a paramotor. It's everything on any engine for that matter. However, two-stroke engines, it's really important. So what I'm going to show you today is why Blackhawk does things the way we do. Here's a 125. Every manufacturer is purchasing cylinders, pistons, gaskets, and a cylinder head as a kit. They're all cast and they're all built as such. The reason is, is a lot of these motors come from scooters. Mm -hmm. And scooters don't run 9,000 RPM or don't cruise at what RPM? 9,000 all day. <laughs> 9,000 all day. Especially with the advent of the smaller gliders. Yeah. So realistically, for straight and level flight, we're typically looking at between 5,800 and 63, 6,400 RPMs. That's a fair amount of RPMs for a two-stroke engine. So in order to dissipate the heat, it takes the cylinder head. That is what the cooling fins are for on both the cylinder head as well as the cylinder itself. Now, we're gonna demonstrate why we do things the way we do them here at Blackhawk. This is your standard head from a kit. It includes the head, an O-ring, a cylinder, gaskets. We throw these away. We do now. We have to buy them in a kit, yeah. but these are worthless as far as cooling goes. Yep. Look at the difference between a CNC head from Blackhawk and a cast. Ironically, the square inches of cooling on this is approximately 108 square inches of cooling. And it's the same on this head here. However, this head, the kit head, has a lot more cooling fins. And as you can see, the gap is only an eighth of an inch between them. Yeah. You want to explain, Mike, what happens versus tight cooling fans and ones that are more open? Yeah, on this style of head, it doesn't dissipate the heat as well because of how narrow the cooling fins are together. So when you have airflow going through there and also look at the thickness of them all together, this holds more heat than this one would. This one being farther apart, even given the same square inches, allows a lot more air to flow freely through the head, thus taking away the heat a lot quicker. You could think of it kind of like a wetsuit. You know how a wetsuit works is when you first get in the water, that, that water's darn cold. But what happens is your body puts out heat, it hits the neoprene, bounces back and forth, thus heating that small or very thin layer of water between your skin and the neoprene of the wetsuit. This is the same. Here, that heat is bouncing back and forth and it can never really cool. Here, there's a lot more room for the passage of that air and thus make it a lot cooler. As Mike mentioned, the thinner cooling fins also. Think of it this way. Something that's thick, that gets really hot, how quickly does it cool down? Something that's thin can exhaust that temperature much, much quicker. Mm -hmm. What is the difference in the cooling between the stock head on the 125 and the CNC head? Yeah, doing test runs on the test stand, I held these at a, actually a relatively high RPM until the temperature stabilized. Stabilized meaning that the temperature didn't go up or down, so that was the temperature it was going to run at. That was approximately um, 7,300 7, to 7,500? Yeah, 7,300 to 7,500 RPM. Uh, running the same engine, same stand, just changing the head. This got us 40 degrees cooler. So as many of you guys that already have the Talon, uh, you all know that we use a porcupine style head on it. Uh, this head has 122 square inches of total cooling surface area. Our original Talon head, when we were first started doing the Talons, really closely resembled this. And just by switching over to the porcupine head and doing our tests, ended up with a 68 degree cooler engine. Uh, we also had some heads made up for the 125 also in doing our test runs. 
Uh, we ended up settling in on the CN seed head for a couple of reasons. Number one, obviously, 40 degrees cooler. Uh, but also, this head from the factory is quite heavy. Um, there's actually significant weight difference. We get a larger cooling area, 40 degrees cooler, and we save ourselves uh, actually weight. This head is actually lighter right. and when we than did the, this one. When we did the porcupine head for the 125, that was a full pound heavier yeah. than the C and C head was. And as many of you know, that the 125 is our light motor. Yeah. That's the motor that you put on your back that is very, very light. So we made a balance of compromise, cooling and weight, um, and decided to go on this one. 40 degrees cooler was is a significant difference. So, And we're saving one pound over going to the porcupine head. As many know, we get our engines from HE, and we actually co-develop many of the engines with them. This is the head that we first got on the 125s. So if anybody out there has the older version head, we will be happy to supply you with this head here. That cost is $35. Yeah, and, plus uh, shipping. That's a pretty small investment for a longer life out of your motor. That's true. Yeah. So what else do we have to explain here, Mike? Well, we can go into what happens when things are getting too hot. We got okay. some spark plugs here uh, showing a couple of different scenarios. Uh, one of the big things that you see on YouTube or if you look on anything on the internet as far as uh, the, the premium spark plug color is everybody wants you to do a light tan. Light tan's great if you're trying to eke every bit of horsepower you can out of the engine. Uh, the problem with light tan is you're going to be running hotter. Um, you're not going to get the same life as you would out of the motor. On the flip side of it, if you're running too rich, that can be damaging too because a two-stroke engine running entirely too rich, it creates a lot of vibration in the motor. So you start shaking things apart at the same time. And even with synthetic uh, oils yeah. that we're using today, it can gum up your rings. And if your rings get gum up, particularly on the exhaust side, yeah. then you're gonna lose some compression there. But yeah. Mike's absolutely right. Uh, a dark, dark coffee brown on your spark plug is slightly on the rich side. However, remember, we've got some tiny little carburetors here, and it doesn't take much to, for something to get in that carburetor, restrict yeah. the flow of fuel, which turns you lean. By having it a dark, dark coffee brown, but not wet, that does give you a little bit of... Uh, gives you a buffer. A buffer. Yep. Gives you a little buffer. Your engine's going to run cooler. You're going to get more hours out of it. And you're sacrificing a, really an... In, it's a not even a huge measure in fuel consumption more. Uh, it's, it's worth it. Uh, your engine's gonna run a lot cooler, you're gonna get a lot more life out of it. I've personally had three 125s. I'm on my new version now with 101 hours, but my other three, I went to 335 hours on them by religiously running that plug like you described, mm -hmm. uh, keeping the screen clean in the carburetor, and overall, just keeping my motor clean, because when I keep my motor clean, I'm finding things that might go wrong before they go wrong. Yeah, also by keeping your motor clean, dirt, oils, everything else stacked up all over your motor affects cooling. So by keeping it clean, it's still gonna run cooler. It also helps you see things easier. You're not hiding problems. And, and, and that's right, and do remember to keep your heads torqued. Yeah. This engine will take you three minutes to torque. Yeah your your head that way you're sealing the o-ring the base gasket and the base gasket yeah do you see any leakage in there it's because you didn't torque the head down remember overnight cold you cannot go cold to the touch i ran it that morning overnight cold torque it down 125 inch pounds on the 125 180 inch pounds on the talon what we try to do when we're training people here is to get them in the habit as part of their pre-flight before they go out in the morning. Is It's really simple. It takes a minute to check the torque on your prop and check the torque on your head. Right. It's real simple. We will show you some more detailed pictures uh, in, the, in the video here of what we feel the spark plug should look like. Yeah. And as always, we are available seven days a week. 
If you have any six questions. Six days a week for me. Six days a week for him. <laughs> Heidi and I had seven days, it seems like, morning, noon, and night. But regardless, give us a call. We don't care what paramotor you fly, what engine you're using. Yeah. If you have any questions, uh, we'll be more than happy to help you. And by the way, our service department does service every make a, a no manufacturer of engine for yeah. paramotoring. Thank you for watching Black Hawk Tips and Education, Education yeah. 101. <laughs>